Hello, recording some homework help. We're start going through several homework sets starting in week five's homework. So a grocery store reduced the price of a loaf of bread. Find the percent decrease. You correctly started with the subtraction. 280 minus 273 is 7 cents. But that's not the percent of the decrease, that's just how much it went down. That's the dollar amount of the decrease. So if we want to find a percent change, that's going to be change divided by original. You can think of it as a fraction, part over whole, if you like thinking about fractions. So let's plug that in. The change is that seven cents. Which of these is the original? It's the bigger price. That's what it was before the sale. So we need to divide by the 2.80. So what is that? 0.07 divided by 2.8 gives us 0 0.025. That's a good answer, but it's not a percent format answer. So now we need to do what we nickname riplop, right into percent, left out of percent. We want to go into percent, so we're going to the right. And it's always moving the decimal point twice, because percents are always about 100, and 100 is two decimal points. On the next problem, there's a lot going on here, so I'm not going to draw it all out. If you want to see more examples from other students, then you can always go to the Google Drive for our class at that top menu of our website, and there's for every homework assignment. Several different students have shared theirs with the class. So this problem asks us to fill in a table that looks like this with the different rows being fat, protein, carbs, and total. The student who I'm using as an example um, did it with um, the labels in the middle. I would put them over here on the edge, but anyway. So we can look it up. Fat was 3 grams. Carbohydrates was 13 grams and protein was three grams. So now we're all done with this. We don't need that anymore. We have put these here. And total, add them all. To find the percent, you're going to do each of them divided by the total. Just like before, change divided by original, part divided by whole. That's how we find percentages. So this is part divided by whole for all of these. And the student writes a whole lot more than we really need to. 3 divided by 19 is 0.157, so that would turn into about 15.7 or 16 percent, and so on for all of them. 3 divided by 19, 13 divided by 19. For the calories, we have this table that carbohydrates and proteins have 4 calories per gram, fats have 9. You get more calories from a lump of fat than you do a lump of carbs or protein. So we take these numbers and multiply them either by 4, sorry, these two are 4, protein and carbs, or by 9, 3 times 9 is 27, and then we do the same thing. We add them all up. And then we do part divided by whole. 27 divided by 91, 12 divided by 91, 52 divided by 91. And for each of those, we'll get a decimal, and then have to scoot the decimal point twice to change it into a percentage. Let's do one that's not all worked out for us already. This is what it will actually look like on the practice finals and the finals. 
to, so for fat, that's 9 calories per gram, so I'm going to have to do a times 9. 10 times 9 is 90. For carbohydrates, I'm going the other direction. So instead of multiply, I'll divide. 64 divided by 4. So 16 is my carbohydrate number for grams. And then I'm going to go times 4 to go with the proteins. 4 times 5 is 20. Now I have these two columns done, and I need to turn them into percentages. So again, I need a total. 10 and 16 and 5, that's going to be 31 grams. And then I do each of them division. 10 divided by 31 gives me 0.3225, blah, blah, blah. So I'll scoot the decimal point twice and have about 32%. Again, how did I get that 32%? I did 10 divided by 31. For the second row, it's going to be 16 divided by the total. And again, scoot the decimal point, and I get about 51.6. Let's round it to 52. And how did we get that 52? That's 16 divided by 31. For this column, I'm going to skip this one. You get it. For this column, it's the same thing. We need a new total. So 90 and 20 is 110, and 64 more, 174. And then again, we're going to do each of these one at a time, divided by the total, and use Riplop, and that's what goes over there. I'm rounding to the nearest whole number because these labels on food are not terribly accurate. So I'm not trusting this is exactly 3 grams. It might be 3.4. It might be 2.6. They're rounding up when they make the table, when the company produces the label. So since they are not incredibly accurate, I'm also going to round to whole numbers. Jumping ahead to week seven, you ask, what are kiloliters? So that goes back to the metric prefixes, and this big table is sort of the one that we think about a lot. If you want to read more about it, go to the website where we talk about that. You can even click here on the Jamboard. Come on, click here. Oh, I have to click on that. There. And, no. There. Now I can copy and paste that if I wanted to. Anyway, um, so the metric prefix is we start with whatever the plane unit is, and that's kind of what we're measuring. It could be a meter, it could be a liter, it could be a gram. Those are the ones we'll use in our class. It could be other things too, like if you're looking at your electric bill, you could have watts. Whatever that plane unit is, then kilo is a thousand of them. Hecto and deco we don't use in this country. Deso we won't use. Centa is a hundredth of them. It and milla is a thousandth of it. Like centa is like century, hundred. Milla is like millennium, like a thousand. There's also two place values that don't have a name, and micro is a millionth of it. And about the only time we use micro is in the pharmacy with micrograms of medicine, a millionth of a gram. So most people don't want this long, colorful table. We'll say, thank you, shrink that out of the way. Instead, we're just going to use the initials. KHD, the plane unit, DCM dot dot micro. And they'll have that in their notes. They'll just memorize that. And when you want to do one of these problems, then all you have to do is figure out where you're starting and where you're ending. So we're starting at kiloliters, 
So we're starting at Killa, and we're going to plane leaders. So that's one, two, three scoots to the right to go from Killa to the plane, in this case, leaders. So the nice shortcut is I can take my number and do the same thing. Three to the right. And that changes it to the new thing. And we're done. So take whatever unit they give you with. Say, how do I get from the old unit to the new unit? And then copy that with the decimal place. And you're done. This one, you started right, but had the wrong conversion factor. We're trying to go from ounces to milliliters, but it's not true that there's a thousand as the conversion rate. So how would we do this? A sample student did it one way, to start with 12 ounces. We know that one ounce is 30 milliliters, because the textbook tells us that. And then the ounces will cancel. Now we're in milliliters. That's what we wanted, and so multiply across the top, 12 times 30, multiply across the bottom, 1 times 1 is 1, the over 1 goes away, 12 times 30 is 360. This process was called a unit analysis. You could also do it like a proportion if you didn't want to do unit analysis. You could say what we know for sure all the time is 30 milliliters is one ounce. That's rounded, by the way. It's about 28.8, but good enough. Then before I finish writing it, keep milliliters on top and ounces on the bottom. And in this particular problem, what happens? So this side is, in general, our conversion rate. And this is what's happening on this problem. So we have 12 ounces, and we're not sure how many milliliters. Now the equal sign is in the middle of two fractions, two rates. That's different than what's happening here, where there's a multiplication. So now I'm going to cross multiply y times 1 is 12 times 30. y times 1 is just y. 12 times 30 is 360. And what was this? Milliliters. If you knew the conversion rate, then you would know we were either multiplying or dividing by 30. And maybe you've just done these so much that you would know it's a multiply 30 without having to do either of these methods. Great, if that's where you are. But most students, especially when they're taking a test, their brain sort of fries. You're not sure, should I multiply by the 30 or divide by the 30? So either of these two methods, unit analysis that multiplies fractions, or proportions, that does cross-multiplying with fractions on either side of the equal sign. Either of those forces you to multiply by 30, so you don't get confused and divide by x. Moving on to week 8. These get more complicated. We don't have a choice anymore. We pretty much have to use the unit analysis, because the cross-multiplying of proportions only works when you have two items, one on the left and one on the right. If you have more items, then it just doesn't fit. The shape doesn't work. So let's do these. You wrote things down okay here, but didn't actually get started. So 0.4 micrograms, MC is micro, as the abbreviation, of medicine per one square meter of somebody's skin surface area. Then we're going to multiply that by the next fraction. The patient has a body surface area of 0.3 square meters. And that's not over anything, so we'll put it over 1 to make it a fraction. You can put a whole number over 1. And now the square meters have canceled. Keep going. The supply of the concentration has one microgram 
a drug in every 10 milliliters of liquid. That's how much it is dissolved. And think of it as like on tap at the bar, even though that's not how drugs are. Right? So I want to get rid of micrograms. So I need to put the new micrograms on the bottom. So they'll cancel. Now I'll keep reading. So the concentration of the supply is one microgram per 10 milliliters of liquid. Now I have ended up with milliliters. All the other words have canceled out. So when they say how much drug will be administered, they're saying how much liquid will we take out of our tap and put in the patient. Okay, just like before, we are going to multiply across the top 0.4 times 0.3 times 10. Did I do point? I did point oh four. Okay, and that gives me 1.2 on the top. And on the bottom, it's just 1 times 1 times 1. So that would become over 1, and I don't really need to write over 1, so I'm just done. If the bottom was something else, I would have to do top divided by bottom to turn this into a decimal instead of a fraction. We'll probably see that in the next one. 57 is similar. The order is 2.5 milligrams of drug per 1 kilogram of how much the patient weighs. The patient weighs 68 kilograms. That's not a fraction, so I'll put it over 1. And now the kilograms have canceled. I'm going to keep reading. Each capsule contains 50 milligrams. So I want to get rid of milligrams in the top, so I have to put it in the bottom. So it's 50 milligrams per something. What is it per one capsule? I'm going to get rid of your little note over here. You sort of got started right, but something happened. Okay, now we're all set up. The milligrams is canceled, and we have how many capsules is the only word left. That's what we want, how many capsules. So I'll multiply across the top, 2.5 times 68 times 1. I don't need the times 1, so 170 on the top. And the bottom is 1 times 1 times 50, so that's just 50. No more words left. And then here's what I mentioned a moment ago. We're going to go top divided by bottom to change a fraction into a decimal. So 170 divided by 50. and 3.4. So what's going to happen? I can't give the patient 3.4 capsules necessarily. Maybe it's the kind of pills you can cut them in half. 3.5 would be pretty good. So I'm actually going to wimp out and just write what it says. Without more real life context, I'm not sure. Should I round up so they get at least enough medicine as they're supposed to? Should I round down so I don't give them too much medicine because maybe it has bad side effects? Can I just cut the capsule in half and say three and a half? So who knows? That's the kind of what the math says, but what the nurse does might be a little... There's other problems that you missed in week eight, but these are the ones most like the final. So to keep you focused because of what time it is in the term, then work on these and not the other. Lastly, we had logarithms. This is just a calculator exercise. Unfortunately, the Desmos calculator hides logarithms under the function tab, func there. So that's where there's logarithms. So this is just a calculator problem. 
how many zeros? One, two, three, four, five, six zeros, and a one after the decimal place. So logarithm, back to main, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, there we go. Negative seven is the answer. That's all you have to do. pH is a process, read 8.4, you take the logarithm, and then you remove the minus sign from the front of it. So same thing. I'm going to go to the functions, do a logarithm, and then from here, type in what it says. 2.512, 2.51, whoops, it went out of the parentheses, stay in the parentheses. Multiplied by 10 exponent, and our problem had negative 7 as the exponent. So, minus 7. And that's our answer. So I'm going to take that thing, and because it says pH, I'm going to get rid of the minus sign in front of it. So it's just 6.59999, so I'm going to round it to be about 6.6. We normally don't say pH to more than one decimal point. So there we go. Take that process. Just type in exactly what it says. Use the exponent key. Use the minus key for up in the exponent. And then once you get your answer, take away the negative sign. And that's it. Hope this was helpful, and let me know if you have other questions.